Hi there, folks. Um, I'm Nadeem Sawar. I'm the, the CEO and founder of Flow. Um, started this business, founded it back in 2015. So it's been a bit of a journey. So um, I think we can talk a little bit more about that and maybe in questions. But, but we'll, we'll, we're going to talk about um, our business and how we've managed to very, very quickly scale in a crisis um, and uh, what the, the future of pharmacy looks like. So, you know, delighted to be here. Thank you to Russell and the uh, Bonnet Tank team for our in the chat. And I'll introduce you to uh, Adam Hunter, who's our Chief Commercial Officer at Flow. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time to, to join us uh, this lunchtime and to Russell and his whole team for uh, Product Tank for inviting us along. As you said, uh, I'm the Chief Commercial Officer. I work uh, very much alongside uh, Nadim, and we work across all, all areas of the business together to help uh, grow and scale what we think will be uh, the pharmacy um, of, of the future. And as Nadim mentioned, our, our topic today is about uh, uh, scaling in a crisis. And we are looking to cover these kind of three main points here. Um, I'm sure it will go off in tangents in different way and uh, of course we'll, we'll leave time at the end for, for any questions that we may not have covered um, in, in these topics. So I will let Nadim kick off. So the, when the pharmacy of 2030 is actually now the pharmacy of today. So to give you a bit of background, myself and Adam are, are Saltar fellows and we ended up going to, to Boston in the United States and we spent a wee period of time studying at Babson. And uh, we came across a business called PillPack, which was uh, a, an online pharmacy, actually now acquired by Amazon. And as a diabetic, I thought, what an incredible business, design-led, technology-led, and there's got to be an opportunity to do something similar in the UK. So like many clueless founders, um, I came back to the UK and I, I started a business. So uh, to give you some background and flow, Flow is a design-led, technology-led, on-demand pharmacy business. So you can very much kind of describe us as the delivery of pharmacy. We're headquartered in Glasgow, um, just because that's where I live. But um, we have a significant operating base in London, and we are about to open up in Birmingham, and I'll come back to Birmingham. Um, we work in three kind of areas, so, and we control the entire pharmacy, technology, and logistics stack. So we always describe the business as three boxes. Uh, the box one is the front end applications. So that's native, native iOS and Android applications, native web app, and a custom operating system, the back end to plug everything together, plug into NHS systems and various telemedicine partners that we have. Um, that was all designed and built by ourselves. We then control the pharmacy stack as well. So in London, we have our own pharmacy. So if you think about our businesses, it's not a pharmacy where you can walk into. Think about it as a big warehouse um, in East London. So we're shortage based in a Bethnal Green direction. Um, and the last element of it is logistics, where we aim to, on average, to get a, a prescription from the moment a, a patient orders to get it into their hands in less than 120 minutes. So I think the key magic to our business is getting all three of those components um, working together in sync, which is incredibly difficult to do. And we're the first on-demand pharmacy in the UK. And actually, I'm proud to say that we're headquartered in Scotland to do that. But um, strangely enough, we have concentrated on the English market and we'll come back to, to why we've done that. Unlike other online pharmacies, other online pharmacies do not have the same model as us. We actually rely on city by city infrastructure. So in every city that we are in, we have an operating hub and that's an important differ differentiation. There's other online pharmacies out there and they stick everything in the post. Um, when we built the business, we talked to a lot of patients and actually we found that patients were very uncomfortable getting their medication through the post. And also that only works for repeat prescriptions. If you want to truly disrupt pharmacy, you need to be able to do those one-off prescriptions, those acute prescriptions where you might be sick, you have um, a, a chest infection, for example, and you go and see the doctor. Using our platform, you can have that delivered to you within 120 minutes. Um, but we obviously cater to a lot of patients with those kind of repeat medication conditions as well. Um, so that's the, how the business is going to scale. We're scaling on a city by city basis and we are launching in Birmingham. 
So we just we just um, are building our pharmacy infrastructure in Birmingham, and we'll be doing the same in Manchester towards the end of the year. Um, for us, it's been an incredible period of growth because clearly with COVID-19, we always thought that the pharmacy of 2030 was this kind of model, a digital interface to interact with the pharmacy. Um, it's city of infrastructure, which could be anywhere, like that. you can almost describe it as dark kitchen style infrastructure. Um, and then on-demand delivery infrastructure to service that. So that was the investment pitch that we made to investors, which has kind of netted us three million pounds so far. Um, and, we, and we basically said that was going to be the model for 2030. Now clearly when COVID-19 kicked off, um, we have a situation where people are in lockdown, patients are in lockdown, many patients are shielded patients, so they can't get out at all. Um, so for us, while the rest of the world was kind of going into lockdown and it was all slowing down for them, businesses furloughing staff, for example, we were completely the opposite. So myself and Adam and the rest of the team, so our team is now about sitting at about 25 people, going up to 35 very soon. And we had to respond incredibly rapidly um, in terms of putting pharmacy staff. So we don't, we, we kind of thought we'd scale at a slower basis and actually we'd put staff into our, our pharmacy infrastructure as we went along and as we growed our kind of patient numbers. But we went from having, uh, we, you know, to give you the context, we launched in October 2020. Um, and whenever you launch any business, it's always really slow. You're waiting for that first patient to come in. We suddenly got to March and we were getting patients, 20 patients an hour signing up. So for a business um, like ourselves, which has limited kind of limited resources in terms of number of people, that was a very, very hard thing to do to scale up pretty instantly and pretty quickly. But more importantly, to maintain the service quality. So at Flow, if you have a look at our website, um, we work on the basis that we try and give incredible customer experience because for us that's the only way we can grow a business a startup and a, a landscape full of giants but that's a challenge when you're growing really quickly how can you actually go and maintain your um, levels of service and quality um, so i mean the critical thing for us is we think we have built the ideal pharmacy operating system and model of how 2030 looks like. And it just happens that that's come a lot quicker. Many of the aspects that we are building, I think even if COVID-19 hadn't come along, we would have ended up here at a much slower pace, but for the entire digital health sector, and we're, talk, you know, we're talking about big, big players such as Babylon and the likes, everybody has experienced rapid growth. So, all that's happened is now that the world of 2030 has come to 2023. So I'm actually now having to rebase all my plans um, uh, and what, uh, what is that going to look like? I see a, a question from Jamie. Um, of, right, if, if the pharmacy of 2030 is already here, what does the pharmacy of 2030 look like? So we, we think, and I'm going to talk about this more as point three of this presentation. There's a massive opportunity for flow. Right. When we built Flow, we have built, built it as an NHS pharmacy. We built the dream pharmacy. What do we think the dream pharmacy is for us and for our patients? What we kind of realized, though, is that can we make that infrastructure open to others? Um, and I think that's a really important delineation. So part of the, the Flow model for what we think in 2030 is building what we call the Amazon Web Service as a pharmacy. Um, so yeah, we can talk about that further. So Adam, do you want to talk a little bit about customer experience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Nadine touched on that and I think that's where we're really laser focused as a business. It's about providing that superior patient experience across the board on all sides of our business, whether that's on the marketing side, whether that's from product to tech, to design, to operations, to pharmacy, to customer service. And really as a team, what we're looking to do is, and, and we, the way we talk to everyone in, in the businesses and, and as a team, we, we've agreed that our key KPI or however you want to describe it is ensuring that at all levels we deliver that superior patient experience and that starts with our marketing activities online 
to then moving uh, potential patients onto our, our website to ensure that consistent brand experience, to then making sure it's accessible and available across um, all, all devices, to then making sure that the registration and onboarding process is as intuitive as it can possibly be, and then looking at the usability of the app and understanding exactly how our patients want and need to use uh, the, the, the application to manage um, their, their healthcare. And then that then ultimately then feeds through into the into the pharmacy team as well. And, and what can the pharmacy team do to really provide that 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 patient experience that's going to distinguish us from 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 our competitors? Not only in the online space, but also the patient experience that you may get in a in more traditional bricks and mortar pharmacy. So we do. Um, Quite, quite simple things, but we really focus on it, making sure that the packaging is of exemplary design and quality, ensuring that the medicine is, is wrapped up and is in discrete packaging, ensuring that there's personalized notes written by the pharmacist to the patient, giving them any advice on, on taking their medication and understanding any potential side effects that may come from, from the script itself. But then it's also about ensuring that human contact because one of the issues um, that online pharmacies will have and maybe one of the barriers it is for patients is that they can't they want sometimes they just want to speak to somebody and particularly when it's to do with your health sometimes people just want that reassurance of, of a human contact so what we've tried to do is ensure that you can always speak to our pharmacy team in whatever platform suits you so if you want to call our pharmacy team you can do that if you want to have a secure instant message chat via our website you can do that also if you want to use email you can also chat to our pharmacist via email as well and providing those different touch points to the patient to ensure that at every point of the journey they feel that they have got the support they need and the comfortable need that we're going to deliver the medication when we say we're going to do it. And COVID-19 has really kind of escalated that for us and, and especially during a pandemic your patient experience and your, your customer service becomes, becomes vital. And we created a red blue system where we had a red team with one pharmacist in the pharmacy itself dealing with the packaging and, and dispensing of the medication and then we had a blue team system where we had a remote pharmacy team set up via an enterprise VPN system to allow our pharmacies to, pharmacists to work remotely but also maintain those levels um, of, of, of patient experience. And I think ultimately that's what we focus on as a team when, when we're talking to everyone in the business and we're looking at our aims for that month. Yes, Nadeem and I will talk about user growth and number of revenue growth, but actually what's important for everyone in the team is ensuring that we're always maintaining that superior uh, patient experience. And we use Trustpilot in particular for that. We always make sure that every, every order gets a, an automatic Trustpilot invite to give us a review. And um, so far, we've had some really good reviews, and we like to share that across the team to really reinforce the, exactly the impact that we're having on, on people's lives and making medicine more accessible. But I'll leave you with one of my, my favorite reviews uh, from, from Trustpilot. It's a very simple one. And all it said was a five-star review, and all it said was, they do what they say. And I know that that's a really simple thing, and you would say all businesses should do what they say. But really, when it comes down to pharmacy and it comes down to businesses, we say we're going to deliver within a certain window. We do so. We allow you to access your medication where you are, when you need it, and we do that. And that's what we need to continue to do as we scale. And, and we work closely with the, the product team and the engineers and the marketing, commercial and ops and pharmacy to always really better understand how we can deliver that. So, so really, to, to kind of sum that up, it's all about the patient experience. And if we can nail the patient experience, we make sure it's a superior service right from the first, your first touch point with the, with the brand to your last touch point, everything else comes from that. And hopefully that will then allow us to become the biggest pharmacy um, in, in the United Kingdom. And one way that we've done that is through different verticals. And, and Nadim will uh, briefly touch on that. Yeah, um, so I, I kind of lost track of my time earlier. So I apologize to Adam. But one of the key critical things that we realized when we built Flow is we are building what we call dream pharmacy infrastructure. So infrastructure for us, for our NHS patients. What we kind of cottoned on to really early was there's loads of healthier companies out there, like telemedicine companies where the pharmacy experience breaks down and because they're having to fax prescriptions, for example, to local pharmacies. So a good example is the online doctor services where you might have an online doctor service, for example, somebody like Push Doctor or Babylon, you'll have an online consultation, but you'll still be expected. They'll fax that to a local pharmacy or choice. You have no idea how much the medicine will cost you, et cetera. So what we built is a, a set, we actually did something really, really innovative. We actually opened up all of our backend system with a bunch of APIs 
which allows other telemedicine providers to plug straight into us. So we have a number of partnerships now where um, telemedicine providers, and we can't actually disclose them yet, we'll disclose them later in June 20, but some of them are very big and household names, and, but they're using Flow's platform and technology and architecture to get prescriptions out to their patients incredibly quickly. So they're effectively we're almost white labeling the Flow technology to other telemedicine providers. And critically, I think that ties into what the pharmacy of 2030 looks like. The pharmacy of 2030 is still going to be there. The high street pharmacy is going to be there. They're going to focus on services, however. So taking pressure off GP. So if you want to go and talk to someone physically, you can do that. However, at that point, dispensing doesn't become the key metric for those pharmacies. So in effect, we then... Um, are able to open up our infrastructure to the existing pharmacy network on a city by city basis. So actually our, our customers actually become other pharmacies. So that's what I think. So 2023 is the kind of stuff we're doing now. 2025 to 2030 is providing an infrastructure play for the rest of the sector. So we've got a lot of questions now. So we, we, I think we'll, we'll go through them. So I'm just gonna Kind of having a look. Uh, well, let's, let's, let's click in. I mean, this is fantastic. And um, we've got a good one here about what, um, you know, how you understand the voice of, of you know, patient voice. Yeah. The website. So when we, when we built the business, um, one, well, actually one of our pharmacists in the team is a UX designer and a user, uh, and a user experience researcher. But the original pathway for building what we built with Flow was based on significant customer research and data, which suggested that patients liked the idea of doing online pharmacy, but they did not want to trust their medication to the post. Um, in terms of, and that's what kind of is defined all of our ideas up to launch. And in terms of user experience and design, we spend a lot of time talking to our, our patients. Um, Part, I'm, a, I'm actually hiring, so I'll be expanding my design team out pretty significantly, and part of that is going to be building a proper user experience um, and design team to kind of keep on allowing us to build great products for, for our patients, so that's something we're focusing on. But okay. most of the original work to get to flow to where it is now was based pre-launch. And what we try to do now at the moment is we... We, we capture that, that patient feedback at, at every side, whether that's from marketing channels where we get people talking to us directly via social media, whether it's the feedback patients give our pharmacy team uh, on, on, on the telephone and, and various other um, surveys that we've done with, with other organizations who have, who have used the app. And we operate on a, on a two week sprint process and we ensure that the pharmacy team and the operational, operational team are involved in that as well. So they can feed into um, what's going into the product and our product roadmap. So we're ensuring that the information channels are, are spread across the business so that you know, design and tech are not operating in a silo and it's based on what um, we need to provide for, for, for the patient and what the, the regulatory requirements are as well, because it's not solely just about what, what the patient needs. We're also highly regulated industry. So there are various things we need to do that the NHS requires, which sometimes we don't want to do, but we have to do it to ensure that we're a safe and compliant pharmacy. So it's a balance between, between the two things. I'll make a point very quickly. We are not an e-commerce business. We're a digital health business. We deal with people's healthcare. We're not putting, we're not putting pop, uh, pills in a, in, a, in a, a parcel and forgetting about the patient. We talk to our patients constantly. That's how you do telemedicine and healthcare properly. Um, but, you're get, but the delivery mechanism is a lot more convenient for the patient. You've got a background um, in running one of the most successful uh, you know, pharmacy businesses in, in the north of England, is that correct? Uh, well, east of England, actually, yes. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us, you know, the fact that you've got these three boxes, you know, you're a tech business, yeah. you're a logistics business, but you're also, you're also a, phar you know, you're a pharmacy. Yeah, we're a pharmacy and business. Fundamentally, that middle box is where the magic happens, where all our revenue comes in. So you're absolutely right, we're a pharmacy business, fundamentally, because that's where the revenue comes in. Okay. Great. And, and it sounds as if that's informing your vision, not only for now, but for, for next. Ultimately, the technology, look, we have a lot of ideas about how we can make this better. We actually have a really fantastic engineering team. Um, 
And a lot of it is informing us about how do we make our products better. So for example, one of the next products for us is acute prescriptions. So an acute prescription is that one-off prescription. Now, there's a question about we, how do we get data directly from the NHS or GP prescriptions. In England, we, there's an electronic prescription system for NHS prescriptions, which you can't have in Scotland, which is one of the reasons we launched in England. However, if you get an acute one-off prescription, you have no idea when that's going to come in. So we've done a lot of work in the background to plug into NHS systems and then to plug into our own back end. So that, for example, if you, Russell, were one of my patients, you've already signed up to the follow app. You've actually gone to your GP. They've issued a prescription there and then. I have no idea it's coming to me. But as soon as that prescription hits, is issued by your GP, it will hit flow systems pretty much within 30 to 60 seconds. At that point, as you leave the GP surgery, you can have that delivered. That's no one else has done that, but that I suppose all the other components that we've built is operational excellence in terms of putting together that technology infrastructure, that pharmacy infrastructure, that delivery infrastructure, and making it work really, really seamlessly together. I mean, we we get asked by investors, what is to stop other people copying us? Based on experience, we probably have a two year head start now. But that's not to say with enough money, people can catch us up. So uh, for us, it's, it's about that excellence piece. I think too, you know, our, our, our product and our product team and engineering team and design team work very closely together. And although it's, it does sound really simple, right? We'll just get you a prescription once you've, once you've had your, your GP consultation, but the amount of thought and effort that goes into that in terms of creating the, the patient journeys and the user flows and how each of the different components uh, interact with each other is, is, is incredibly complicated. And, and we know we're very lucky to have uh, a talented team across, across the, the three key sectors of that technology, product design and pharmacy who work very hard together to ensure that that patient experience is, is superior as possible and consistently learn and we do change it every two weeks and, and we'll continue to, to do so and if we can carry on that focus we should be able to scale. There's a question yeah. that from somebody I want to answer because I think it's really so it's about APIs for telemedicine players um, what we did uh, what we did there we actually went out to a bunch of telemedicine players before we built the product and said we'd already built the product um, which all great entrepreneurs do. We kind of had it half built, but based on that, then we kind of found out exactly what their dream product was and we built it on that basis. So in terms of the, the, the tech stack, um, we, we've kind of, uh, if every telemedicine player has different levels of sophistication. At the very, very top level of sophistication, you have some proper technology companies there and they will do um, pure play API integrations in, uh, and you need to kind of understand their tech stack. For other types, they want more of a soft approach in terms of um, how you integrate together and we do different things. So for each telemedicine player, we kind of tailor it. But as we're doing that, we're building a product suite out, which allows us to kind of offer different options to different players in that market. Fantastic. We had a, a question a sent in by, yep, Mairead, over to you. Sorry, yeah, we had a couple of email questions in um, actually before this from Zena Amos, and she's asking, pre-crisis, did you have a roadmap and how much did that have to change to accommodate needs given the COVID-19 crisis? And were there any key outcomes that you were working on that have now gone on the back burner as a result? Yeah, absolutely. There's a ton of stuff that we've had to move around in product. Um, so there's a number of things, there's a number of product improvements we wanted to make. Also, we had this opportunity to do a lot of stuff in telemedicine. So I suppose we have two kind of core products at this moment. We have the core delivery application, which is very much NHS focused, and we have our white label plugging our infrastructure into um, telemedicine providers. Because we had the sudden influx of telemedicine, um, COVID, uh, we wanted to take advantage of that. So we had to um, put a lot of stuff on the back burner on the NHS application. Now, I don't like having to do that, but we, what we've done in, in retrospect is we've hired. So we've hired, uh, we've hired two engineers during the month of May. I didn't intend to do that. I intended to do that a little bit later in the cycle. Um, so the roadmap is still the roadmap. We'll get to it. Um, but I suppose as you grow, and as revenue starts flowing into your business very, very quickly, you can start putting that you know, that hiding piece in place to allow to get you get the roadmap back in place. But ultimately, it's about what's the most important thing. I mean, so ultimately, 
you, you have to kind of balance and I get very frustrated, but that's the way it is, unfortunately, when you're building a product-based business. Okay. Well, I mean, this has been absolutely fascinating. Um, I'm, I'm sh you're continuing to grow. Yeah, you, you, your product's at the heart of what you're doing and, and you're hiring a number of, uh, of, of product management roles. That's right. We have a number of product management roles that we're kind of figuring out um, how to do in terms of uh, improving product management in our business. We'll be hiring for another two engineers. Um, we'll be hiring for a number of product management roles. Um, we will be also be hiring um, for pharmacy staff and marketing staff. So our business all in, we should be hitting about 35 people by the time we get to August. And at this moment in time, we have a massive influx of revenue. So I think if I to give anybody any advice about trying to build a company, please focus on the important things. It's great to talk about investment. We've had lots of investment, but that investment is an enabler to allow you to go and build a really great product that serves a customer need, delights them, and then brings revenue in to make it a real company. Now for us, that revenue is now allowing us to reinvest, to go and build a really fantastic team. Um, so yeah, we'll have a number of roles and I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, etc. If people, if once we put those jobs up and if people are interested in what we do, by all means reach out, we're always happy. I think Adam and myself are, are nice guys. Adam's a nicer guy than Matt, myself, so, um, but we're always happy to have a chat and to, you know, to talk about what we're doing and we're always happy to talk to people. I know there's a number of questions we couldn't get through today, but if people reach out, we're happy to talk to them directly as well.